everybody remembers their first cream pie. And if that didn't get me banned from YouTube, then you are in for a treat because today on Poor Choices, we are making a Boston cream pie. It's a cake, but they call it pie for whatever fucking reason. <laughs> and this is my first time making this dessert. That's right, no pro shit here, which means if I can make it, you definitely can make it. And after you've had your first cream pie, it's really hard to go back to regular old cake, cake, cake. Now, this recipe definitely takes some patience. I started out the night before making my pastry cream because it really needs to chill for a good while to come together and hold its shape. Rushing this recipe, even at the end when you need to chill the cake, can lead to a less than ideal eating experience. Trust me. First up, the pastry cream filling. I've got six room temperature eggs here, and yes, room temperature matters because it makes mixing the eggs way easier. I'm separating the yolks from the egg whites by using the shell, crack it in half on a flat surface, then pass the egg yolks back and forth between the two shell halves, allowing the white to drop off into a bowl. Place your egg yolks in a separate bowl. Now, there are cases where having even the slightest bit of egg white can mess up a recipe, but I didn't experience that with this, so don't worry if it gets a little bit in there, just don't get a lot. I'm also going to scald two cups of milk. And for those who don't know what scalding milk is, this is almost boiling, but not quite. I did this over medium heat, and right when you see the edges boiling, the steam rising, and hearing that hissing sound, Take it off the heat and let it hang out. This milk will be important in the tempering of our eggs, which is to say bringing the eggs up slowly in temperature to mix without causing them to scramble. Too hot and the eggs will cook and you'll have to start all over. To our egg yolks, we'll add 2 thirds cup of sugar and whisk vigorously until light and thickened. Next, we'll need to sift in 1 4 cup of cornstarch. And let me say, the sifting is very important. On another recipe I did once, I used to skip the sifting of ingredients like flour and other stuff when it told me to, not thinking it was a big deal, but it was. As not often doing it left things lumpy or not coming together the right way, so definitely don't skip out on it. Whisk until no lumps appear, and you can see it leaving a trail off the whisk like this when you pull it out. Now for the tempering. Now listen. Don't fret if you mess this up. I know I did the first couple times I did this with, again, another recipe that I was doing. Mistakes are meant to be made and lessons learned. We'll start with taking 1 fourth cup of our hot milk and slowly whisking it into our yolk, sugar, and cornstarch mixture. Slowly as to not introduce too much heat all at once. And keep whisking continuously. Again, this is helping bring the eggs up to temperature slowly without cooking them. Once you feel like you've got that initial 1 fourth cup mixed in, slowly pour the remaining from the pot and whisk continuously until everything is combined together. Then, back through your sifter, pour the mixture back into the pot. The sifter will catch any lumps that may have gotten by the whisk or if any egg may have started to cook. Consider this like a safety net. I'll add in one tablespoon of vanilla bean paste and you can use the exact same amount of vanilla extract. This is actually just all they had at the store that day. Continuously whisk over medium high heat until it thickens and just slightly boiling. Then maybe give it another 30 seconds after that just to kind of thicken up a little bit more. The reason being so that the pastry cream can support the weight of the cake that's gonna be sitting on top of it because we're gonna put all this in between two cakes. From there, kill your heat and add in one tablespoon of butter and that will give it a nice silky texture. Stir in until dissolved. Now, shout out to Preppy Kitchen for this next tip. I have two Two round cake pans of the same size, eight inches. One will be for the cake and the other will be for our pastry cream. Normally you'd put the pastry cream in a bowl and cover it with plastic wrap, chill it, then whip it back up and spread it onto the cake. But with this method, the pastry cream chills into our desired shape already. So we don't have to do anything except pop it out and on. So in that eight inch cake pan, I'll add some plastic wrap to the bottom pour our pastry cream in, which is still kind of hot by the way. Then I'll cover it with another layer of plastic wrap and it's so important here to make sure the plastic wrap is touching the entire surface of the pastry cream. If you get relaxed here, it could cause a nasty skin to develop on the top. Pop it into the fridge and let it chill overnight. Now some recipes will say two hours, some will say six. I say be safe and let it go overnight, which I've made custards for my alcoholic ice cream. Again, that was the recipe I was referring to earlier that I messed up a ton of times. And yes, that recipe is coming, uh, but it uses some of the same processes here and I had way better results letting it sit overnight than just for a few hours. Now on to the next day and our cake mix. Sure, you can skip this and just do the box stuff. Not mad at you at all, but you've done this much, so let's at least see how we can do here. I guarantee this will be way better than the box stuff and you'll feel all accomplished and everything that you did it from scratch. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and spray that second eight inch round cake pan down good with some baking spray. Line it with some parchment paper and let me just say there are a million tutorials on YouTube on how to get your parchment paper uh, cut perfectly round into the circle for your pan and you'll be surprised how easy it is. It is so easy that I forgot to film it because I was in autopilot mode. But while I could go and film me doing it again, how about I share the views with some other channels? Just search round parchment paper. Okay, while our oven is preheating and we got our paper cut out, this cake batter is easy. 
Combine one cup all-purpose flour, which I measured out to be 140 grams, then add in one and one fourth teaspoon of baking powder and one fourth teaspoon of kosher salt. Mix that together and set aside. In a mixing stand or other bowl with a mixer, whichever you prefer, combine two room temperature eggs, and we're using the whole egg this time, yolk and white. Combine with one cup of sugar. Mix at medium speed with the whisk attachment for about four minutes until thick and light in color. While that is going on, in a microwave safe bowl or measuring cup, combine half a cup of whole milk and five tablespoons of unsalted butter, unsalted is important here. We'll pop that in the microwave for 30 second bursts until the butter is melted and the milk is steaming. I think mine took a minute and 30 total, but your microwave may be a little bit differently. When our milk and butter mixture is hot, we'll add in two tablespoons of our vanilla bean paste or vanilla extract and stir to mix. By this time, our egg and sugar should be mixed well and leaving a trail off the whisk. We'll add in slowly our flour mixture at a lower mixing speed and let it combine. Then we'll add in our hot milk and butter mixture and let that fully mix together. Scrape down the sides if you see anything clinging on. From there, we'll pour this into a parchment lined and greased baking pan, the one we did earlier, and into the oven it goes for 30 minutes. Of course, we'll check to see if it's done by poking the center with a toothpick and seeing if it comes out clean, which mine did, hooray, the hardest part is done. I let mine cool for a bit before trying to remove it from the pan like five minutes or so. Then I took a knife and went around the edges to free it just in case some of it was stuck. I then put a cooling rack on top of the cake and flipped it over, ensuring that I don't do anything stupid like bang the cake out of the pan and break it in half. Safely on the cooling rack, remove the parchment paper and then we can let the cake cool completely. Be careful here because the pan will still be hot when you're flipping. And as for the cooling, that can vary. I think mine was sitting out for just over an hour, but you'll know when you touch it. We need it to be completely cool so that way when we cut it in half, we're not gonna be doing too much damage to it. And yes, we're cutting this baby in half. Speaking of which, it's an hour later and it's time to cut it. Now this is where some might be intimidated or be like, hey, I'll just pour the batter into two cake pans and problem solved, which you could do, but this is less dishes. So I've got this eight inch round cake board that I got off Amazon for like $5. Place that on the cake and then using the cooling rack, flip back over and then you can place it onto a cake turntable. This turntable is going to make your life so much easier if you can get one. A little piece did come off, but oh well, I ate it to check for poison. And I know it seems like there's a lot of things that you gotta purchase for this, but listen, if you're making cakes from scratch, you might as well have it all, baby, right? Okay, for the actual cutting, I got nerdy and pulled out a tape measure and discovered my cake was two inches high. So at the one inch mark, I put a toothpick in the side of the cake, rotated a little, then added another. This will serve as our guide for cutting. I plugged mine back out because I could see the hole that it left pretty good. And using a serrated bread knife, just start cutting and rotating. I kind of went around the edges first, rotating the cake so that I could start cuts on all the holes. Then as I rotated, I applied pressure on my knife, working towards the center, and it just started gliding through with ease. Boom, much easier than you think, and I bet yours will be even prettier than mine. I do find the bread knife to be way easier than say like one of my chef's knives, just FYI. And I think a little piece might've broken off here too, but whatever, checking for more poison. Now we can grab our pastry cream out of the fridge and it'll pop right out of the cake pan. Remove the plastic wrap so that it's exposed and then I found it easy to pop the cake bottom on top of the pastry cream, lining it up, then flipping it back over. That way at no point will our cake ever be unsupported. Look at that, beautiful. We'll add our cake top portion on and then I use the spatula to kind of push in any of the pastry cream that may be bulging out. It's bound to happen, but this was a nice clean operation if you ask me. One last step and that is our ganache, AKA our chocolate topping. First, let me say you could absolutely just use a chocolate frosting. In fact, the first time I had a Boston cream pie, it was in a cupcake and it was just regular chocolate frosting, so good. Uh, but the ganache is just good. It just looks really cool and dope um, and it's pretty easy to make. So for this, I combined four ounces of bittersweet chocolate that I've broken up into pieces and one fourth cup of heavy whipping cream. In hindsight, I should have added a little bit more whipping cream because I wanted this to be a little more loose and I wanted it to kind of drip more. I should have used one third cup of heavy whipping cream. And this is just my preference. It was still good, but I really wanted it to drip just for cool looking purposes, nothing else really. So pop those into the microwave until the chocolate is melting, again, just in 30 second bursts. Stir it up and then pour that bad boy on top. Then while rotating, use your spatula to kind of push it out to the edges. Now look, some say for a Boston cream pie, it should never go over the edges. But though some ain't eating my cake, so I'm making it the way that I want. Again, next time a little more heavy cream and maybe an extra 10 seconds in the microwave will get me to where I want to be. Now this is the hardest part, but the most important, and I cannot stress this enough, it needs to chill for a few hours. I know you just did all that, your kitchen's smelling good and you're ready to eat. And I'm telling you from experience because when I filmed this, I actually only let it chill for an hour because you know, I got things to film, things to do. And it was good, but not as good as I had hoped. And I was like, oh no, what did I do wrong? Did I mess this up? Then I put it in the fridge and let it chill for like maybe five hours. And it was a world of difference in taste and experience so much better. Everything came together really well. So I'm just telling you, maybe give it six hours if you can be patient enough. Let that thing chill. Then cut into it and eat the entire thing if you want to. It's your baby. 
eat your baby. And that is our Boston cream pie. Again, if I can make this my first time ever making it, you could definitely make it and I know you could make it even better. Practice makes perfect. Just because your first time you fucked up doesn't mean your second or third or fourth or 20th time will be the same. And hey, Poor Choices Kitchen, we have a Patreon link down in the description. $1 a month is all we ask for. It helps go a long way in paying for these groceries and these recipes during these inflated times. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking for a really good poor choice to go with this, uh, again, sorry I didn't get a chance to film this. Uh, I've had a lot going on. This is what I would recommend. There is Godiva's chocolate liqueur, some Bailey's, and absolute vanilla. And I would say go one part absolute vanilla, two parts Godiva chocolate liquor, and two parts Bailey's. Mix all that together and you've got like this kind of almost vanilla Russian type thing. It's super, super good and it's gonna go great with this chocolate and cream cake. I promise you that. So give that a try too and let me know how it was. Might be a little bit on the pricey side because you're buying three different liquors, but man, is it good. And it'll get you drunk. So enjoy that and I'll see you next time.